What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action, spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color, playing as Isis. His name is Chemo. His opponent today in the blue color, if I can click there, is Skadi and he is playing as Set. The map is Anatolia. This is best of three for the Champions League. Chemo is back, ladies and gentlemen. He had some computer difficulties and he has sorted those out and he's ready to play in this tournament. Uh, I was told by his um, secretary that uh, he's been very, very excited about this tournament and super bummed that he was not able to play these games. Uh, so he's ready to get in and get them played and, and have a fantastic time doing so. Uh, I don't know how, what happened, but he had uh, some, his computer broke or something and he had to get some parts in. And because of the uh, COVID restrictions and stuff, he could not get them in easily. Uh, but he's managed to do so now and he is ready to play and get back to that old level that he was at where he won the Bill Gregg Open. He is definitely a favorite to win this tournament here. So we'll see how he goes. Uh, and we do have to respect the fact that he's possibly rusty here. He is one of the few players that de-rusts in less than a week uh, because of the sheer amount of games that this man can play. Uh, and just the, this he has like such a crazy, uh, crazy attitude towards the game and he just can just play games on end with no breaks and he, he's, his willpower is pretty insane. Uh, so, We'll see what he can do here. He has taken the Isis here on Anatolia. So an interesting decision. Isis is definitely the, well, it's always the classic, it's it's the classic god that is considered um, strong on Anatolia. It's like the god that people say, you know what, Isis is probably the best on Anatolia. But I feel like she hasn't really had that much test, been tested that much in the modern era. And I say this because uh, gods like Zeus or Greek have had had um, really hyper modern um, Anatolia builds made so that they can pump out all the fishing ship, get up very fast and, and do things like semi-fast mythics, which are, which counter ice is very, very hard. Uh, and and, and um, then we also have like uh, the, uh, the, the Atlanteans of come up with some ideas on Anatolia to work around their problems. Uh, and the Norses as well, uh, very, 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 very strong on Anatolia just because it's a water map and the Norse tend to be pretty good when they're hyper accelerated from the, uh, from the fish. So we'll see what, uh, what happens here and what happens, but Skadi's going for the set here. Set is the other god that is considered quite strong on this map simply because he gets out animals which can de deny docks. But Kimo's already got the docks up on both sides. Uh, so he's gonna be able to get fishing ships out and he can build up those, do the, those docks with fishing ships if he needs to. Uh, alternatively, he can trap his villager into the dock on the side. You build the dock and then you build two walls and you should be totally fine. The board does come over here and we'll spot this villager leaving the shore. And you will see the dock is up with a house to boot. And the priest has returned to the home base for chemo as well. I like that. You don't want to lose the priest, so just keep him alive. And then you can use him a little bit later to defend in the classical age. Uh, and we do see, what's this? Five villages on wood, five villages on gold. It's a little bit of an interesting build. Five villages on wood does give you enough wood to gather to build a uh, fishing ship from one and a half docks. If you put the pharaoh onto it, which he's not doing, if you put the pharaoh onto it, you can get enough villages with five on wood to build from two docks consecutively. Uh, but he is opting to do something different. Villages pumping out. He's going to build up a lot of docks here, it looks like. And this villager chilling here for the time being. Not throwing up that just yet, the Doctor Shed. He is building up a temple, so he wants to advance quite fast, it looks like, with two villagers building this temple up. But I'm not sure he's gonna have the oops. I'm not sure he's gonna have the, the food. And I tell a lie, he's gonna have it very nicely there because he's empowering uh the, the food over there. It's a very smart build order here from Kimo, and it's looking like he's gonna be rushing a second town cell. Uh because he's just pumping villagers onto gold at this point. Uh Scardi on the other hand, putting up his temple here. He's only gone for four villages on wood uh, and he's already 
got quite a few fishing ship. He needs to stop the fishing ship though, um, because he's already built nine here. He's gonna build one uh, dock here uh, with his fishing ship and the chemo ship's looking forward to see what else he can get. He does have all nine fish over here, so he just has to build a couple more. We do see the ball coming over here to stop this one. And as I said, does not have to send a villager over here. He can just use this uh, these fishing ship to get this dock up. It's very slow but he will be able to get it up at some point. We do see the priest coming over plus the boars to try and deny this one. And we see a sneaky dock coming up for chemo down on this side of the water as well. Uh, he's got seven villages on wood. If we check out the upgrades. He's got no upgrades, but does he have anything coming through? We've got Anubis coming through for Scardi, Chemo going through Bass, and Hand Axe coming through for Scardi as well. Once with the village coming up to Chemo, lots of villages on wood at this point. So it's looking like this could be a potential semi-fast heroic from Chemo. Um, you, we have seen Isis or Egyptian players, uh, they, they basically put seven villagers onto gold, the rest go onto wood, and then when they hit the classical age, they get an instant per scene. They spam villagers onto gold, build an armory straight away. You can get out like 10 to 15 cabinets and hit a classical or heroic age at, at nine minutes, and then start spamming out seed ships to just crush the water and get out heavy, uh, heavy cabinets to, to really iron in your advantage there. Um, but we'll see what he's going to be doing here. Check out the technologies. We see pickaxes coming in. We do see an immediate cabinet coming out. So no, uh, no fast per scene here. As he is struggling to get this or keep this dock up, but the docks do get defended there by the cabinet. As these fishing ship going to be putting up this dock over here. Would have liked to see it get put up over here though. We do see this dock is almost finished here. A villager over here uh, going to be sniping this one. Plus the cabinets here. Uh, they do have a bonus damage against this. This is going to be relatively close here. But most of these fishing ship will probably be falling. If I was chemo, I'd just cut my losses and say, all right, I'm going to retreat away. Oh, it gets the... I tell a lie, the dock was very close. I didn't realize how much damage had been done to it. And now he's kind of got control on this location. Very sneaky there. There's the armory. Still no per scene for either player. I'm a little bit a little bit surprised about that one. We do see a plague of serpents coming down over here, which will be able to tank some of that dog fire. And um, Kimo happy to just sit back here and let the uh, let the docks deal with this. I wouldn't pop out of these uh, these docks at all until this is dealt with. Uh, and Sky is just going to use this to get some advantage with the food income. We see the uh, Anubite coming in to deal with uh, deal some damage. Sphinx and Priest are still chilling in the base for Chemo. Armory is on its way. Village are going to get trapped here. Could probably garrison micro this one out, but sometimes it can be a little bit finicky. There is a little slot there for him, so no problems there. You can see that these sea snakes just uh, all get all get sniped here by the uh, by the docks. Going to be popping those cabinets out now to finish this one off. The Sphinx coming in, going to be attempting to pick off some of these animals. Of set, we'll be able to do so very very fast, and then go after the uh, go after the Anubite here. And Scotty does see this one going to be retreating away. We see some raids coming up onto these fishing ship here. Three cabinets to four cabinets though. So Kimo does win this fight. If he chills in the corner over here away from the dock. See what uh, Scardi does. Scardi does have a priest over here to attack back onto this Sphinx. The Anubite and the priest are gonna be able to finish this one off and then he'll back up that Anubite. So nice play there by Scardi to, to pick that one off. Still no, uh, Still no heroic age here. Kimo struggling a little bit for food because he was pushed off over here and three of those fishing ship were uh, are stuck up on this dock here when they should be over here fishing up over on the Mahi Mahi. But given that he has uh, done this over here, he does uh, prevent Scardi from having those three fish. So pretty smart in general. And the cabinet's coming over here at this point, going to be picking off these cabinets here and actually going to probably keep this dock alive here. If we can pick off all these units, it's going to be really close. It's looking like Scardi is just going for it. The fishing ship going to pop out and immediately just rebuild the dock. It's a nice play here from Kimo to keep that one going. Now we see the cabinets coming on the bottom side of the, the, uh, the water here, trying to pick off some fishing ship. Nice micro from Kimo. We do see Nephthys is on the way for both players, 20% and 50%. So both players with a very similar build here. 
Very similar strategy, however. Chemo's got access to Ancestors Eclipse, whereas Scardi's got only access to Ancestors. So Chemo definitely very far ahead at this point in the game. Uh, and we'll see what he can do here. He's, he's going to have access to an extra three fish as well. So if he builds the three fish over here at some point or not, and we do see... Uh, still building cabinets up here for Scardi. I'm not sure what his aim here is. And there's the heroic edge for Scardi throwing up the, the, the uh, town center in the middle of the map. Monument to the villages is up, so he should have the favor to get a mid doll as well. 14 favor for Kimo, 21 for Scardi, so plenty of favor to go around. And we'll see where he goes with this. The priest moving forward here for Kimo, gonna get immediately sniped by the Anubite and the other priest for Scardi, so controlling the middle of the, the, uh, the land there. And Kimo gonna to attempt to take down these docks here. Do we see any uh, siege ships getting built? Nope. Do we see the uh, Leviathans out for both players here? I think they have bonus damage. No, they have no bonus damage. One of the few myth units that doesn't have bonus damage against myth units. Um, but for some reason, it's getting just stuck there. And it does decide to turn around as Kimo's sending his Leviathan in right now to try and take down Scardi's Leviathan. And we do see the Migdor Stronghold is up for Chemo in a nice position here. It's protected by the cliff. Nice play there. And we do see an Obelisk coming up now for Scardi, who's trying to see what's going on. The uh, Chariot Archer will put a stop to that as Prosperity comes down for Chemo. There's 2,000 gold left here, 100 gold left on this gold mine, but that's all going to get cleaned up very, very fast. Scorpion Man getting chased around by the Anubite here. Scorpion Man does win this fight pretty handily here. And Scardi, not paying attention, will be losing it, unfortunately. As the Siege works coming up now for Scardi as well, who's going to be attempting to get those going. Uh, the town centers are fairly close to each other, both kind of in one screen length. So this could be a mercenary fight in the middle. Gold mine situation here for both players. It's pretty good for... Actually, it's not too bad for both players. There's one gold mine here for Chemo. This gold mine and this gold mine kind of off limits for both of them. These two gold mines here are possible to grab a little bit later with a stray mig doll coming up. While they're fighting over over this area of the map, should be no problem for both of them. So we, we could have a fairly decent... Uh, a decent fight here you know, for gold mines and for map control. But Kimo definitely a little bit in front right now. We do see Scardi moving forward here, going to be trying to snipe some of these. Uh, actually, not even going for the priest there, was attacking the Scorpion Man. Not sure what was going on there. Loses two chariot archers effectively for free there. And then um, Kimo can just retreat and heal these uh, units back up if he wants to, or keep applying pressure and doing uh, all of that stuff. Moving in, we do see this villager a little bit out of position as Kimo is going to be able to snipe that one down. But for some reason, the chariot is targeting down the town center. And then he picks off the villager. Going to be retreating back. Do see a, uh, a scorpion man here for Scardi. There is a priest. Has hands of the pharaoh, so get a little bit of damage done. Or a little bit of range, I should say. We do see Salt M4 is out for Kimo, whereas Scardi's got only per scene. And a lot of his fishing ship have been picked off at this point. So it's a lot of catching up for uh, for Scardi to do here. You see Scardi moving over with these chariot arches. He does have, uh, they both do the same damage, but they get built a slightly faster here, I think. Um, I think the, the chariot arches have like a 20%, 20% train time. So well, that's a thing. Negative 20% train time, not positive 20%. Uh, and we do see the walls coming up nice and early for Chemo. I love it when he when I see players doing that. Market's already thrown up for Chemo. He's going to be thinking about going through. I assume you want to go through Osiris here. Going through Thoth does not seem like the right play, but maybe getting those uh, those elephant out might be a good idea. But you are against probably against Horus here. Viscardi, uh, and we do see monuments of the soldiers coming up to try and defend against any early tornadoes. So he's gonna have to throw these monuments up kind of everywhere. Uh, and I think he should be relatively well protected, whereas Scardi's not gonna be protected by a meteor, which is gonna do a lot of damage. We do see the priest coming in right now, looking to build, cast that ancestors and fought out, force out a defensive ancestors eclipse that might run into these seven priests. But they don't have funeral rites and they don't have hands of the pharaoh. So a little bit low on the range at only 19 range compared to the 21 range of Kimo's priests here. 
We do see that Scardy is opting to retreat now and nothing was cast there. And we do see the Monument to the Soldiers, which wasn't finished. It's gonna be finished up now and the walls are almost all up for uh, Kimo, or not really. He's trying to quarter off the map as best as he possibly can here. And he does have, well, the question is, can he start the trade route and will he need to get another gold mine? That's the question, or if it matters or not. And there's the ancestors coming for Skadi. Kimo casts his own ancestors eclipse, but priests here plus the pharaoh will be able to pick off these ancestors as soon as they spawn. This is going to be a really devastating attack onto Kimo. He's actually having to spam out mercenary cavalry here to pick off these siege towers. Siege towers coming over the villages, moving in here, you know, attempt to heal this up or repair this one up with the uh, help with the ferry here. The villagers are on top of it. Two siege towers are already here, and this is going to go down. It looks like it's very, very close. Villagers do not get onto the town center fast enough. The ancestors are doing so much damage here because there's no priest. The priest and pharaoh were able to pick off every single one of those ancestors' eclipse there. So the ancestors' eclipse basically did nothing, uh, and now the priests are able to help out in the back. We do see the pharaoh uh, empowering the town center to try and get it back up. The siege tower turns around. will slow this one down, but the villagers turn onto it at this point. The ancestors is going to keep it from going back up. Mercenary going to be spamming into this location, but he does not have enough resources to be doing this just yet. This mining camp placement is very poor. These villages are going to be very inefficient. Uh, wouldn't it have been a bad idea to send villages over onto this gold line here? Uh, and we see Chemo desperately trying to get this town center up as Scardi with this timing attack is doing an absolute crazy amount of damage to Chemo. And Copper Weapons Fortified Town Center is coming through for Chemo right now, but Scardi with the uh, with the attack here looks like he's going to be able to push in even onto this Migdal stronghold here. Uh, I'd love to see him just move forward, stop these Mercer and start building some towers up here as well, just to prevent this town center from ever going over to Scardi. And um, we see a random boar here checking out these gold mines as well, which I do like as well. But Kimo is going to have that trade route going at this point, uh, which will slow down a Mythic Age. So. Uh, there's not even going to be like a, a option to get out that side of a Cyrus to push back. We do see Kimo starting to build some war elephant here. There's the mercenary cavalry moving in. So this army doing some damage, tanking quite a bit. Cavalry coming over to try and snipe down that war elephant there. Look at how long this cavalry, uh, cavalry lasts. Doing, uh, getting a lot of damage done, does eventually die there. But that's uh, that's how it works there for the Egyptians. Still spamming out the mercenary cavalry as Scardi sees some uh, some light here. Came up with a lot of resources in the bank, a lot of wood in the bank, not a lot of gold or food, but a lot of wood in the bank. Throwing down another siege works. Going to continue to try and uh, try and get this location back because it's very important. But the question is, is he going to be able to? We just see some villagers moving forward now onto these gold mines over here. You could put villagers on every one of these gold mines, which he's going to be doing, sending mining camps every which way. And we see uh, heavy, heavy elephants coming through for chemo as well. It's not a bad idea because the elephants work very nicely against this army from Scardi. We'll see if Skadi can advance. We do see Kimo going through Osiris now, so this is going to change things quite severely. But the Pharaoh does get sniped straight away. You've got to be careful about that one, Kimo. When you're advancing through Osiris, you definitely have to keep it alive, and it's coming down to 43 HP. But a mummy does come out, which is going to help out quite a bit. Do we see a priest getting built. Yep, one priest getting built. Hands of the Pharaoh uh, on its way as well. There's the priest to heal up the pharaoh. Men Kaur the second. <laughs> Men Kaur Hor. Nope, that's not. Uh, I, I don't even know. Wall's coming up now for Kimo and Scott. He's actually completely devastated here for some reason. The mummy too good. Is Kimo able to just defend? And it looks like Kimo is waiting for the city of the dead to research before he casts on Osiris. I'm not sure if it's like a... Actually, he didn't wait on it. We'll see if it works. It does work. There was a bug that happened, I think, on Nilla in that if you didn't get City of the Dead before you cast on Osiris, the uh, extra HP bonus didn't didn't work. 
Uh, now the son of Asara is going to be making a move in here. Ready to push uh, push back to, onto Scotty. The uh, son of Asara can actually pick off these siege towers nicely. Uh, like I've said a million times, one of the few units that does hack damage, range hack damage. We can pick off the uh, pick off those siege weapons really, really well. And villagers now going to be building up this town center, and that's going to give Scardia, oh, it's going to give Kimo, excuse me, a very strong advantage here. But Kimo has run out of gold at this point, but. He he can easily get another gold mine here if he wants to. The Son of Osiris gets immediately targeted down here. Nice play from Skadi. Kimo not paying attention. He's already lost a quarter of his HP. Almost half of his HP. Does lose half his HP. Garrisoning that uh, that Son of Osiris into the Siege Tower here. Before the Siege Tower does get sniped. Son of Osiris pops back out. And he's going to get take even more damage. Can he get a surround onto the Son of Osiris? It's going to be very, very close. He does get the surround. The Archers are going to be on top of the Son of Osiris. Now that's absolutely huge here for Skadi to snipe that one. That changes things immensely now. Skadi, uh, even though the town center is back here, Skadi going to have quite the advantage because all of that, that uh, Osiris advantage is going to be gone now. Chariot Archers moving forward now going to be onto these villages, picking them off. We do see Champion Elephants has come through. Mercenary Cavalry getting spammed out for Skadi to try and defend here, but so can Kimo in this location here. Uh, spam those out. Another mining camp up for Skadi as he's trying to grab this gold line here uh, and Kimo's on this one as well all these villages getting picked off by the chariot archers we've got champion chariots in here for Kimo as well the damage is getting done but Kimo is just getting so far ahead he's already got the uh, camel caravans out he's got coin age out as well and I'm not sure he even cares about these villages at this point because he's got like he's already got basically 18 fishing ships out on top of that he's got probably 20 20 uh camel caravans so he wants to be under the pop cap on villages anyways so losing these villages does not matter at all to chemo uh even though the the kills look good and he has to take them it's not going to matter to chemo one bit he's just going to be replacing that population with camel caravans and be spamming out the trade and going for the late game here catapult getting going to get picked off here by those uh chariot archers Anyways, and Kimo spamming everything out. He's got 400 gold in the bank, sitting at 165 of 169 population. Scott is sitting at 160 of 160 population. Uh, if we check out the, uh, the technology, you've got quarry coming in for Scotty, boiling all signal flares, and flood control coming in for for Kimo, whose economy is just powering ahead right now. As he's taking everything out here. The mercenary cavalry getting picked off. Chariot archers doing their thing here in the back. Do see a spearman out as well for for Scardi. Migdor Stronghold coming through. Just trying to secure these gold mines. Scardi's trade route's not the best here. He should be putting the market a bit closer and just dealing with it. But not going to be doing so. Same with the chemo actually. He's got a little bit of uh, extra room that he could do. And the fairy's actually empowering the wrong market. Maybe the wrong market. Some of these camels are dumping in the wrong market here. As the fight continues in the middle here, and Scardi's trying to restrict Kimo's map a little bit up the top corner, and Kimo's actually moving in over here with nice walls here, quartering off, uh, quartering off Scardi, and a nice siege tower raid here onto these houses. Nice decision there. Picks off the picks off the docks, which makes these fishing ships redundant as well. We do see a ramming galley trying to take down a dock over here. Well, those units are, look like they're being forgotten about for Scott. He needs to needs to get them going here. Now the war elephants or the champion elephants are moving in here. Going to try and take down the mid-dog stronghold. That one elephant's not going to be enough. And the mercenary cavalry just getting spammed out by both players at this point. And the villagers come around and pick off the uh, the siege tower before coming back over onto this wood with the lumber camp already is. Fair enough. Sometimes it's easier to left-click than it is to right-click. So... It's a thing. Come, we're getting sniped. As 
a crazy amount of fighting going on here, but Kimo's got bronze armor now compared to Scardi's not even full copper armor plus champion units. These units are trading so much more efficiently uh, and Kimo's just getting further and further ahead. Can get more upgrades here, can get more stuff. We see walls coming up now for Kimo as he's trying to block off the, the mercenary path here. If he gets that wall finished off, means the mercenary have to run all the way around this way. Not only that, it does allow uh, for... Uh, for Catapult to come and sneak in here. And I think they'll be able to sit in this location and start sieging away at that, uh, that town center. Would have loved to see a little bit more uh, villages here to get this wall set up because now the siege towers can just come in and, uh, and pick these walls off. We see the Catapult coming out now. Needs to send some mercenary cavalry over here to pick this one off. I like the play from uh, from Chemo here, but he needs to needs to get solidify this a little bit more. You see the catapult starting to siege away at this one now, and the uh, the mercenary cavalry going around the long way, like I said they would. And the catapult will get picked off, trying to build up this wall again, uh, but it's not going to be happening as Scardi too quick to act there, still sitting in the in the heroic age. Kimo getting iron shields now, getting super far ahead on the technology. And the question is, can he use it for anything? Um, I do think he's... How's his economy going? He's still got 2k wood, so he can he can afford to just sacrifice a bunch of uh, economic gathering time now to move forward and get these walls up. We're very, very smart. I like this wall here, and then you finish off the wall again like he had it for a wall over here as well. Finish it off. Uh, and cut off this uh, this location from uh, from Scardi, especially from those mercenary. He needs to throw up some towers as well. When you're ahead against uh, against Egyptian players, build towers one one screen length away from the uh, from the town center, like here first, and then start moving forward so that the uh, the towers can defend against the mercenary. They don't instantly get picked off. Catapult moving forward. They're a little bit too far forward, but we'll see if they can. They can just retreat as well away from the, ca uh, the mercenary cavalry when they do click on them. So not a bad idea there. We're seeing that they're currently doing all the damage here. Scardi sitting at... We're still sitting at 160 pop, so still doing nice. And we see some raids coming over here for the chariot archers. Kimo, uh, seeing that Scardi hasn't set up his walls just yet, going to be able to hit these... Uh, this trade route and the gold mine and everything else while this is all going on. We just see the catapults getting picked off right now. Watchtower's trying to get up for chemo. Town center is very close to going down. One more shot here. Maybe enough. And it does kill the town center, but there's no catapult left. And Scardi does decide in that moment to tap out. GG, well played by chemo. I love this play here. He almost lost it when the town center went down, but his economy was just so huge. Able to get to the Mythic Age and push Scardi back with those elephant getting out. The war elephant, the uh, the heavy elephant was key. And building a couple of those was uh, was very, very smart. Uh, Scardi had no answer to the, to the elephant at that point. Uh, just because he had only heavy chariots. And then he wasn't able to keep booming away. How's his economy looking? Yeah, he's only got bow saw. He doesn't have irrigation. So his farms are really slow. Uh, and he's just struggling for the economy. A lot of people say set economy is weak, but I mean, yes, Egyptian economy is slightly better. It's got 10% more wood and, and food gather rate, uh, but it's not really that much of a difference. And you shouldn't be that far behind on the economy. If we check out the post game here, Scardi with 1325 to 1789. And we do see the SIF counts very similar. So this is, this is all about... Uh, economic upgrades here and we can probably see that things were fairly even here until they started coming up if we check this out 14 minute mark is where things started going a bit a bit sideways for the economy here and if we check out uh technologies as if there's no like technology tab we can see it here though 40 to 16 but i would have liked to see the uh, when they came through those uh those technologies but uh, such is life. Anyways, if you enjoyed this game, please give us a follow on the Twitch if you want to see the games or see me when, as soon as I go live. And uh, if you're on the YouTube, hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next game.